Sometimes get comments or emails from viewers with questions. And the way they pose the question, it's clear that they're looking for, you know, a, a straightforward answer, black and white, yes or no, <laughs> linear logic. And I have to disappoint them. You know, I have to give the, the truth as I see it. And, you know, it's like the old Jedi mind trick. This is not the answer you were looking for, you know. <laughs> like the cartoon. This cartoon is a favorite of mine. Let me explain it for those of you who don't get it. <laughs> The seeker is climbing up the mountain, looking for the guru. Why is he looking for the guru? Because look, his poor head is all scrambled. <laughs> like a Rubik's cube. So what does he want the guru to do? He wants the guru to twist and turn and solve the puzzle and make it a nice square, you know, flat sides with the same color on all the squares on each side and like that. But when he gets to the guru, I mean, look at the guru. His head is a sphere and it's got a nice design of flowing colors on it. <laughs> this is not the answer you're looking for. <laughs> But think of it like this. We're talking about consciousness. Consciousness is the, the stable datum at the core of this teaching. And we know there are four states of consciousness. What are they? Jagrat, or waking consciousness. Svapna, or dream consciousness. Sushupti, deep sleep consciousness, and finally Turiya, the fourth, which is the source of the other three. And this is known as enlightenment, samadhi, nibbana, you know, self-realization, all of these things. This is the, uh, the answer we're actually looking for. But since it's transcendent, it's beyond all the other three. So the guy with the Rubik's Cube head, you know, he wants the guru to straighten him out. <laughs> but the guru is saying, no, no, the question is irrelevant. Huh? Just like, you know, a line is one dimension. A plane is two dimensions. A cube is three dimensions. But what's beyond that? Huh? The fourth. You can't really describe it in any terms that are intelligible to the other three. Because the other three are only partial. And only the Turiya consciousness is complete. So the four yogas karma yoga, bhakti yoga, raja yoga, and jnana yoga apply to the four states of consciousness. Jagrat, svapna, sushupti, and turiya. You have to be in those states of consciousness to do those practices. Otherwise, they just don't make sense. You know, if you're in jagrat, and you're caught up in the world and all these objects and you think your body is real and you think your ego is the self. 
Well, if I start to tell you about Raja Yoga huh, or even Bhakti Yoga, you're going to be like, come on, you know. <laughs> That's too much. It's too internal for them. They can't cognize it. And similarly, if someone in the state of Bhakti is told that, no, you have to do all these external religious rituals of Karma Yoga, he's just going to laugh, you know. He's already been there. He's done that. He's, he's got the t-shirt. <laughs> and he's gone beyond it to a higher stage. So for him, it's not relevant. But at the same time, if you tell someone in Bhakti Yoga about Jnana Yoga, or even Raja Yoga, they'll reject it. Because they say, well, that's not Bhakti Rasa. That's not Bhakti Bhava. You know, that's impersonalism. <laughs> you know, they're going to reject it because they have not any relevant experience. So it's the same when I give an answer to a question. It's like, what do you want? You want me to give the answer that you think you want? Or do you want me to give the real answer? Do you want me to give you the truth? You know, you won't understand it because you don't have the relevant experience. But still, it's my duty to present things as they are. You know, so I have to say neti, neti, neti. The truth is not in external religious rituals of karma yoga. Neti, neti. The truth is not in the internal beautiful but ultimately imaginary dreams of bhakti yoga. Neti neti, the truth is not in the void of raja yoga. Where is the truth? It's in jnana yoga, in the state of turiya. So this is the truth. And it's always been the truth, and it'll always be the truth, even though all kinds of people who are really no better than animals are trying to say that consciousness is a phenomenon in the material world. It's an, it's an epiphenomenon of brain function or whatever, you know, whatever the latest theory is. None of that is really relevant because it doesn't take in our experience. If we observe our experience very minutely, uh, very alertly, we can see Turiya in the space between the other states of consciousness, like going from waking into dreaming, from Jagrat to Swapna, or from Swapna to Jagrat in the morning, waking up out of sleep, out of dreams, there's a tiny interval where you're neither in one nor the other, you're in between. This is the borderline. Huh? This is called Sandhya or Sandhi, the borderline, the connection between the two. And when you're in between, neither in one nor the other, that's when it's possible to see Turiya, just for a few seconds or a few minutes. Try it. This is there in everybody. But because people don't know to look for it, they don't see it. You know, it's the old thing where if you don't have the terminology, if you don't have the conceptual structure, you won't get the experience, even if it happens right in front of your nose. <laughs> so even though our whole life is really nothing but consciousness, we miss the fact that consciousness is fundamental because the only consciousness we know is conditioned consciousness. Uh, either Sushupti or Swapna or Jagra. Because we're identified with one particular type of practice and philosophy. This, this is a type of clinging. The Buddha used to say there are four types of clinging. Uh, there's clinging to objects, there's clinging to 
practices and views. There's clinging to feelings and there's clinging to consciousness. So clinging to views means we want to view the world from one specific point of view and every other point of view is wrong. We often see this in spiritual neophytes. They want the answer, they want to be told that their particular point of view is right and all others are wrong. But that's not true. <laughs> all points of view are wrong except Turiya, because Turiya is rooted in Brahman, and Brahman is the Absolute, the Self. So to, to give the correct answer, to give the real answer, to give the right answer to all these people, I have to use concepts that are beyond their experience, and because of that, they have a hard time grasping them. So what to do? I would ask you to grasp it or take it, not exactly on faith, but as a conceptual framework. Huh? If you haven't experienced, well, everybody experiences the four states of consciousness every day but they just don't look for them, so they don't observe them. But if you start to look for them, you'll find them, including Turiya. <laughs> and you'll also see that all of these four states of consciousness are available all the time. They're active and available. And the only reason we don't see that is that we don't have the framework to look for it. But, you know, take, for example, a, a typical day. You're out doing something, going here and there, paying attention to all these objects in the world, Jagrat consciousness. Huh? But at the same time, within the, your mind, there's this conversation going on, isn't it? Doesn't everybody have this inner conversation? This is a dream. I'm talking to myself. Hey, you. <laughs> As if I'm somebody else. It's so weird. But this goes on in the mind every day. So, for sure, we are in Jagrat and Swapna at the same time. Or, for example, daydreaming. We're awake, but we're lost in a fantasy world, like when reading a good book a good novel. We get transported into another world. That's a dream. That's Svapna consciousness. So we're simultaneously asleep and awake. Simultaneously dreaming, but also aware of objects in the world around us, like the book that we're reading. And then there's Sushupti. If Sushupti consciousness was not active, we would be aware of everything all at once, and it would be too much. So sushupti, or deep sleep, or ignorance, is actually a help to screen out things that we're not aware of. That's what we call attention. Attention means that we focus our awareness on one particular thing. And then what about all the other things? They're hidden behind a screen of sushupti. And the fact that these three are going on all at once, all together, simultaneously, means they have to be contained in something else. Something that doesn't change from moment to moment, like our attention. That is Turiya. Turiya is the container that holds and sources the other three states of consciousness. And that's why there are different religious teachings that have wildly divergent views and practices and contradict one another. And that's why these are necessary because we're all in a mix of several different states of consciousness 
at the same time. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum.